is what we wear out mics to tell deep stories in spite of what kind of pain they may cause we louder than a bomb florida is here offering students a platform to perform and change their lives forever through the power of poetry joining me now to discuss the competition darius daughtry director of the blue apple poetry network and a poet sophie hyman thanks so much for joining us here on impact it's great to be here thank you Darius, let's talk about the Blue Apple Poetry Network and how did it start? So um, the Poetry Network is actually called the Omari Hardwick Blue Apple Poetry Network and it's a, a program of the Jason Taylor Foundation. So we all know Jason is a longtime Miami Dolphins and he started his foundation 11 years ago. And three years ago, the Poetry Network with actor and poet Omari Hardwick, they came together and they created this idea to take poetry and spoken word and bring it into the schools of South Florida. And so three years ago, we started working in schools and it, it includes curriculum, after school programs, in school programs, and the whole idea is to give these students a voice. And initially, was there an interest in this program? Uh, from the students? From the students. From the students. Um, a lot of them, there was, but then for some of them, uh, it kind of grew on them. Mm -hmm. And as we began to show them that, you know, sometimes this, the idea of what poetry is about, it seems to be archaic, it's old, or it's something that you find on an old dusty shelf or something that you're, you're made to do. Mm -hmm. But our idea is to give it to them and, and make it palatable and make it interesting and make it, make it cool. Mm -hmm. And so then they, they were just able to see that and now it's growing by leaps and bounds. So to make it cool and now there's a festival involved louder than a bomb. First of all, that's a very interesting name. Right. Yes. Tell us about how that name came okay, about. Okay, so the festival, it, it, it was created in Chicago with the Young Chicago Authors and the title a lot of the bomb is actually the title of a um, an old public enemy the rap group a song that they have on their oh, albums oh yes that's yeah, right absolutely mm -hmm. so um, they the idea is that your voice is louder than a bomb mm -hmm. that your voice has that much power and that much magnitude that it's able to blow up any spot around the world such significance right Sophie I do you consider yourself a poet I do consider myself a poet I have up until high school once I had creative writing teachers that encouraged such writing and poetry and slam poetry and brought me into the world of Louder Than a Bomb and like lyrical lounges and voice box, the Blue Apple Poetry Network taught me that I can proudly say that I'm a poet. And growing up, was this something that you were interested in? Did you know that you could write poetry? I didn't know poetry was attainable for me. I thought it was just something you read about that famous poets one day became, but I was always a writer, just not a very good writer. I progressively got better with time and a lot of help from teachers and accepting forces like Louder Than a Bomb. Mm -hmm. Let's awesome. talk about poetry and other students. Is it popular? Because it, it doesn't seem like it would be pop popular among high school students. My high school in particular, Cypress Bay, um, I'm a senior at Cypress Bay, and we encourage the writing of poetry. And our creative writing teachers, Joyce Siegel and Shawty Herring, inspire their students. So when we bring out poetry to the students, we'll have hundreds of kids who have never heard such spoken art come out to learn and educate themselves. And that's how we grow, is when other people find that they can also be heard from like-minded individuals. And do you perform your poetry? Do I do. you recite it? Yes, uh, when I write a poem, I'll first recite it to my teacher, Joy Siegel, and her class, and then I'll bring it out maybe to the Blue Apple Poetry Network, and Louder Than a Bomb, I helped perform in a group poem that another individual wrote, and us coming together and working together on this art, it inspired all of us to become a little more and to step out of our shells. Mm -hmm. You're obviously a very poised and, and talented and smart young woman. Uh, I, when you're reciting those poems, do you feel that you're in a safe place that you can say whatever you want to say? I think I turn into a different persona when I recite my poetry. It's the person that I want to be that I'm proud and confident to stand up and speak in front of other people and to be heard for that message to be reciprocated is something that only spoken word poetry can give me. It's not just a performance because you're not putting on a show, you're connecting with people and they relate with their own experiences, which is something that no art can make as clearly as spoken word. I, I love that, Darius, and I, I want to know how Jason Taylor and his foundation got involved with this whole aspect of poetry and Louder Than a Bomb. Well, absolutely. So we, um, it first started, uh, we have a, an after-school program in Miramar, mm -hmm. and about three years ago, a young lady 
she wrote a poem. And that poem was heard by other people. And they were like, you know what, this idea and this program needs to be bigger than just in this small room in Miramar. And so with that, uh, we took the program and started working and, and beating down, down doors and started working with the Broward schools. And, and we're, right now we're in over 50 schools in South Florida. And we're, with our La in the Bomb Florida competition, we had schools from as far as Homestead, all the way up to Fort Pierce and Port St. Lucie coming to Broward County to compete in this inaugural lot in the bottom Florida. And as, as Sophie mentioned, um, what it is, it is that safe space. It is an opportunity for these students to get on the stage and, and perform and speak their piece and be validated and feel whole and feel that what they're saying, what they're feeling and what they believe in and who they are is important. And that's one of our main goals is just to, to provide that experience for these young, young poets. When you speak about this, you have a sense of passion. Oh, absolutely. How did you get involved in, well, in poetry? I, well, I'm a poet myself. I'm a, I'm a writer, a director, but I've been writing poetry since um, I was about five or six years old. And for me, one of the, my biggest advocates was a, a teacher I had and in high school. And her name is Miss Bills. Uh, and she helped change my life with believing in me and inspiring me. And so with our program, it, it leans a lot on our teachers. And so it's important that the teachers are involved and they're, they're the ones that in, in turn help inspire these young poets like Sophie to do what they're doing now. And the festival runs through when? Uh, it started on April 8th, so it runs through April 18th. And mm -hmm. so on the 16th, we have the individual final. So the festival is a team competition. So these schools have teams where they have individual poets and then there's a collaborative poem, like Sophie mentioned, where there's four poets performing at one time. So their individual finals are on April 16th and uh, the finals for the teams are on April 18th. And uh, that's happening at Nova Southeastern University. The use of the spoken word is such a powerful thing. I, I imagine that when you do this, you feel empowered, right, Sophie? I do. I tend to speak a little louder than usual. And other people acknowledge that what I'm saying comes from my own originality. And for young people to feel original, especially in this transitional stage in my mm -hmm. life and their life, it's something special for other people to realize that you're still your own person. I love it. Well, good luck to you. I hope to see you in the final, Sophie. Thank you. I do, too. <laughs> Darius, it's a great thing that you're doing Thank here. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. Thanks for Thank joining you. us I appreciate here on Impact. It. And still to come, our lighter look as Jimmy Fallon examines Bill Clinton's role in Hillary's likely presidential campaign. It's coming up next.